What's up guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, this is Kobe Shorts and in today's video we're going to look at how we can blend continuous light with flash and next to me is the beautiful Levona, she's going to be our model for today. With me is my setup, a very simple setup, I'm going to go to the lighting setup after I speak about my camera setup. I'm shooting with the Canon US R coupled with the Tamron 24-70mm 2.8 and uh, behind me is this small LED from Yongno, the YN216. So with my key light shooting through the softbox is the AD600BM and it's going to serve as my key light. You're not seeing it right now because of the shot, but I'm going to give you a B-roll so I know how I'm going to position my light throughout the shoot and I'm going to just keep it as it is. This is one of my best positions when I put together my light setup and it's going to intensify how much light shines on the model and doesn't touch the background. And it's going to be because of the distance that we have over here. So without much ado, let's get right into the video. The first thing that I consider every time I'm shooting with continuous light and flash is that the flash is definitely going to overpower the continuous light. And in my case, this light doesn't really give a lot of power output as compared to the AD600, which can even overpower the sun. Keeping my continuous light over here, we need to see how it's going to hit my subject from behind to create the rim light that I prefer. So let's take the first shot and see what we can do with the build up from there. So can you please step forward a little bit? Okay, just like so. All right, and um, of course, my key light is a flash, and so you don't see any light in the face. I have a continuous light over here just to make you guys also see as I shoot. So when I turn on the continuous light, immediately you see a case of light hitting the backside, but you actually see it as a rim, which separates her from the background because of the color difference over there. So with the warm light hitting the back like that, you can position it anywhere that you please, and you make sure that you don't touch the background, unless probably that's the look you're going for. But if you are not going to want it to touch the background, with the help of these band doors, mainly some lights come with them, LED panels come with them, but if in any situation you don't have that luxury, you can use a flag or any black card to block the light that's hitting the background from you. But in my case, I'm quite lucky because I can um, articulate these band doors not to you know, allow the light to spill where I don't want them to. So having a look at what I have so far, I noticed that it's hitting my model all over to the shoulder. And if that's not what you're looking for, you can always adjust because I can also equally articulate the height of my light. And you notice that it leaves the collarbones and uh, it only touches the back of the head all the way down, just like so. So I've deliberately turned off the key light so that we can look at how much intensity we want with my rim light, which is the less intensive light source, which is a continuous light back there. So I'm gonna take a couple more shots. Shooting at ISO 50, F2.8, as well as uh, 1 over 125 of a second, which I'm definitely going to increase because when I shoot in HSS, I most likely get wonderful skin tone. So I'm going to shoot beyond 125 of a second. Okay, so, so look straight. Levona, look straight into the camera like that. Okay, so I like the case of light, but probably uh, I'm going to increase, yes, my ISO a little bit like a few notches higher, so I see what I can get. Beautiful, all right, so this works. So now that the demonstration of how much intensity I want from the, you know, the rim light, which is my continuous light, which is not as strong as, of course, the key light over there is set up. We are now going to set my key light to actually illuminate my subject and still expose or still have my rim light still seen in the images. So let me take one first shot. All right, so I'm shooting at still at ISO 100 and um, shutter speed of one over 250 and an f-stop of 2.8. Good. All right, so Levona, can you, yeah, flick your hair forward like you're doing? Three, two, one. Let's see. Now keep your eyes straight into the camera. Look directly into the camera just like so. No, straighten your head a little bit. All right, good. Look directly into the camera. Okay, so in as much as I love the images over here, I still notice that there are a couple more shadows underneath her chin, under her nose, and where the eyelashes block the light. So what I'm gonna do is, of course, luckily for me, I have a big reflector over here that's going to compensate for the light loss. 
And uh, you know, Squire, you know, as much as she is tall, we have something that can actually um, compensate for all that. So I have a pillar over here in the center of the studio where I can lean my reflector against. Okay. And that is going to help me bounce back the light into the areas that are dark. So let us test the shot right over here. Okay, so Levona in three, two, one, look right here. Good. Okay. Can adjust it as you wish. Three, two, one. Okay, so notice that this looks much more cleaner and less contrasty than before. All right, so that works. You see me? Bring your hair back. Yeah, good. Thank you, man. All right, let's go into your camera. Good. Now let's get a reflector on the knee. Straighten your head a little bit. No, it's okay to you. Good. Keep your eyes here. 